Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to create stencils with using your Brother Scan and Cut SDX125. You can follow along with whichever model of machine you have. I will give you some tips on how to create stencils using the CM models when I get to the part where you may need to change your settings a little bit differently than what I'm doing. The nice thing about the creating stencils with the SDX125 is due to the type of machine it is and the built-in auto blade technology where you don't even have to change your blade depth or anything because it's all it's all built in here to this auto blade you can create stencils right out of the box no extra materials are needed the machine cuts through thick materials like such as mylar right out of the box well this is the mylar I'm going to show you that and then I want to just before I even get started into the actual contents of the tutorial I need to acknowledge my viewers. I want to thank you. I'm very grateful and humbled. My channel, Paper Chef YouTube channel, has just reached over 19,000 subscribers. So I've, I'm very thankful to you, and I hope that I can continue to teach you about paper crafting and the scan and cut for years to come. So thank you for watching me and for commenting and liking my videos. I appreciate all of you. And so because I appreciate you, I'm doing this tutorial based on recent suggestions and questions from several viewers about creating stencils. Now, although I've created stencils in the past and I've called my tutorials something along the lines of how to create a stamping mask or how to create a stencil from a die, this time it's gonna be a little different because I'm gonna be creating stencils right from the built-in patterns on our machine. I'll explain how you can vary this later, but you really need to just understand in the first place how to just cut thick materials. So let's start with the skills that you're going to be learning. I'm going to go into pattern and I'm just going to go ahead and select a circle. So I want to just teach you the certain skills in this tutorial and the first is just going to be how to resize a shape, how to cut out this mylar and how to change that those default settings so you can cut thicker material. Okay and that's it and then I'm going to actually make a decorative stencil in the next in the next part of this tutorial. So and in that part I will teach you about different things such as pattern interval and changing cutting area. But right now, I'm, I can just put a circle anywhere I want on the mat. I have a purpose, I need some circles. I've been using them for this project. And I want them to be 1.75 inches. Notice I'm just changing the width and the height is changing. I could change the height and the width is changing. The reason for that is because I haven't checked off this box. If I check this, I will be changing these values independently. I don't, I don't want, I want to keep these values in proportion because after all, it is a circle. I don't want this to be an oval. I'm going to go ahead and make it 1.75 because that's the size circle I need. I'm going to click that and set it on the mat. So let's just talk about something. If I want this to now be an actual stencil, I can do something to it by putting a sort of a rounded shape behind it. And, Unless you have already, so, so for example, say you had a 12 by 12 piece of mylar right now, and I already cut mine down to six inches, and you want this to become your stencil, you would, you would then put a shape around it so you could handle it better. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how you do that. I'm going to go ahead and add pattern, and I'm just going to click on the square, and I'm going to go ahead and add a rounded, see, this third one's a good one, a rounded square. And the reason for that is, but when you're working with plastic, it can sort of cut you if you, or scratch you, I should say. I mean, it's not really going to cut you, obviously, not like a blade, but it's going to scratch you a little bit. So I like to kind of round the corners if I can, and it, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But in this particular case, I was creating, I was creating squares around my circles, and and it seemed to work fine for me either way. So let's just go ahead and create a a four inch square. Okay, and that, that will cover, so what we want to do is I'm going to put that ne around my square so I can show you. And that will cover, so say I'm using my mask, which I'm going to show you how we go about using it. Then it kind of covers an area around it so that, so for example, I'm going to cut a hole in this mylar. And say I'm coloring something inside the circle, I want to protect the area around it so that ink doesn't get all over my cardstock. So I'm going to put that little rounded square around it. Well, let's be precise, right? Why, we can because we have a scan and cut. So let's go to edit. And let's go to select, select here, and we're going to use the second selection, which means selecting everything on the screen. So right now we have the 
rounded square, and the circle selected, I say OK. I'm going to click on this button here, the one with the four arrows, and I'm going to align these. So what I want to do is I want to align them because if I'm going to cut out a circle inside a rounded square and use this over and over again, this stencil, I would like it to be aligned. Why not? It'll look better and I'm going to keep it and reuse it. That's why I'm using Mylar so that I can reuse it. Okay, click on the alignment tool. This is, this is vertical alignment. What that did is it made them go in line with each other vertically and then horizontal alignment. And now they're perfectly aligned. And if I want, I can click OK. Because they're both selected, I can go to Object Edit and Group. You have all these same buttons on your CM machines. They're just in a little bit different spot. But the group, as you can see, it looks like the little circle with the triangle all wrapped around a square. So this is it. I don't like to cut too close to the edge any, any time, so let's put it up there. It, I get asked all the time, why do I always use the top right section of my mat? Shouldn't I cut over here? It doesn't matter where you put this, as long as you put the mylar or your cutting material wherever on the mat in relation to where you put this. My top right of the mat is stickier. Okay, so we'll put it up there. Next, next video, I mean next section of this tutorial, I'll put it up in the middle somewhere. So go, let's go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and uh, cut that out. So we're going to say okay. We're about to cut mylar, so there's there's some settings. There's some settings you need to use, and these settings are important. Let me go ahead and say cut. I'm going to click cut for a second. The settings are important whenever you're going to be cutting things that are thicker than your typical cardstock. So these settings, I, I like to just talk about the default settings versus the settings I'm going to be using. These settings are going to be for thicker materials, what I'm showing you. So click on the little wrench. So I'm, I'm about to cut, but before I do, I could do a test cut, but I've already done all that. We're going to just go in right into the little wrench and right into this little tool and we're going to go to your settings. So what are the default settings? The way you know that they are default settings, meaning right out of the box, you can't really mess anything up if you want to ever go back to your default settings on a scan and cut right out of the box. They always have these black squares around them. These are your default settings. So that's how you know they're default because they have black, black outlines around them. The things I like to change when I'm cutting thick materials are the speed and the pressure. So let's, we, I like to lower the speed because it can't keep, if you have a real thick material, it can't keep up. Okay, meaning this, this particular machine, if I would leave it at five and it goes fast like cardstock and I'm trying to cut through thick material, the blade might get caught. It, it just, it can't cut through thick materials as fast as it can cut through thin materials. So let's lower the speed to three. Okay, so it was a five. It was default of a five. The cut speed is now a three. Okay, so it's going to go slower. However, you have thicker materials. So you should, your, your pressure needs to be higher than, higher than the default. So we, we don't want to use auto. We just, we, we can, but we just say, I like to just pump it up. Well, only in this machine, I pump it up to like a seven. Now, if I'm using the CM model, at this point, I don't need to do the pressure so high because instead of using the auto blade, like I'm about to use an auto blade, I would be using what's what's called the deep cut blade. It's a special blade that they make for another kind of model. And I'm gonna put that in the notes. So there's a little arrow. The arrow is kind of face, it looks like that. It's facing down. It's under the bottom right side of this video. And it's called the description of the video. And I get asked all the time, where do I put write all these notes I'm talking about? They're all gonna be in the description of the video. So that's where they're at. There's a little drop down arrow and I will have the settings you use right now for the CM models. So we've, we've done our settings, pressure seven, speed three, and it's, it says it's gonna take one minute. And the reason I'm doing this one first is because I actually wanna show you how Mylar is cut out, start to finish, and show you what the finished cut looks like. Because in the next part of the tutorial, I'm not actually going to make you wait the seven or 14 minutes to cut out many, many multiple shapes, but I wanna teach you how to do that. So this is now the time in this tutorial where you can go, Okay, I actually saw Mylar being cut out. Like, you know it works, and so if you get this particular Mylar, which I will have linked, then you'll know it'll work the same way for you. So now what's happening is this. I'm gonna go ahead and sit, tell you what's gonna happen and what I'm doing. Okay, so let's move the machine away. It's about to do a second pass, okay? It's about to do a second pass. I do not like that because when you have a second pass, I don't need a second pass, A. Eh? I don't need a second pass. I can see already, can you see that? There's my right there let me get a spatula my mylar is already cut see that you don't need a second pass the settings i gave you will be fine for your first pass if it starts doing a second pass you have room for error meaning the mylar could slip 
the blade could change. Do you just it you're you're setting your if you have if you do a second pass, let's just go ahead and say quick cutting. It whenever it has thick material, it likes to cut twice. If you know you don't need to cut twice, don't create trouble for yourself. In other words, if you don't need to cut twice, just say quick cutting. Okay, some some are afraid to quit cutting, but when mine is done, it's done. I don't need it to cut anymore. So let me just show you what the output of that is. And so we're gonna lift this up. This is, you save this because you can use this for many things. I even showed you how to make lanterns out of this. We, we made we made a little mini, I took the mini curve, curvy keepsake die and I, this is like translucent and I made little lanterns. I think it was around Halloween time. But this Mylar scraps are great for many, many things. So here's our stencil. Okay, so and here's our circle. So I used, in the cards I show you, and by the way, if you're new to my channel, I show you my projects at the end. I don't show them to you at the beginning. I, I actually used this on one of my cards, this circle. And I, I was using, this one I needed, so I'm cutting out this round edges. I used it, but I didn't make the round edges earlier. So now I have a useful stencil I'm gonna be using for my projects, and I'll show you what I have in mind for that. So now, what I'm gonna do next is this. I'm gonna take a big old piece of mylar, I'm just, I'm just going to take a 12 by 12 piece, put it on the mat. Okay, so now we have a 12 by 12 piece. And because it is plastic, it sticks pretty well. I, I don't really... I, I'm going to use a little bit of painter's tape. That's one of my tricks, just to show you, you know, that I do use painter's tape. If I were scanning right now, I wouldn't use painter's tape because I don't want to cover the registration marks. But I'm not scanning. I'm actually using a built-in pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and... Make sure my mylar is pretty secure with a little extra painter's tape on both sides. And that's because these, this next one's going to take a long time to cut. And I'm not going to make my crafty friends wait for that whole time. I'm just showing you how I would go about putting that on the mat and all the steps. So let's, if you wanted to save this, if you wanted to save right now the work that you did and the stencil and use it again later, we can click back and you can click save. And you can save it to your machine to your canvas workspace or to your USB stick. So let's just save it to our machine. And it's telling me that I have a group pattern. I can't ungroup it later if I save it, but that's okay. We want to save it. So now let's do this. We're going to, I'm going to click home. We're going to delete all patterns. So now I'm going to show you the big picture of what we're doing next. And then I will go off and watch well, it. I don't need to go off and cut these. I already did, but I want to show you how you would go about cutting them. And we'll actually get started on that. So let's show you. So what I want to do first is, this is my example. I made a decorative mask, and I'm actually using this in my cards. I don't like to do anything that I won't actually use. And first one I did was this one. So I want to show you this one. And then, then I created this one, and I like it better. Well, actually, I like them both, so I'm glad I have them both. So let's, let's do this. We're going to first, before we do anything, we're going to determine the size mask we need. In particular, my crafty friends were asking me about masks for cards, and they so they wanted it to be bigger than an, an A2 card. So this is an A2 card, and it's about four and a half. Well, the whole thing would be four and a quarter by five and a half, but this is just one of the layers for it. You definitely want to make sure you cover the front of the card base, in other words, if you're going to be maybe using this mask on the front of a card. So let's just start by saying, let's just go into settings, and let's make the cutting area six by six inches. Okay, so let's just start there. Let's put it... I'm going to go up here again, just because I put in a 12 by 12 piece of mylar, but I'm just going to use the top part of the mat. And then it's about here. We'll make it even a little more, a little more, because in my trials, I did six inches by six inches exactly around. So we'll make it six by six. All right. So that's good enough. That's the cutting area. So now when I create a shape, when I go to put a shape on the mat, let's click OK, a pattern. And the pattern I'm using, let's just let's just start there. Let's just go into this pattern. I want to start by telling you the pattern I'm using. I chose this pattern because it's just a really good thing that I, I love using. I love using weird shapes on the back of cards to add texture and dimension. And I thought of using like stars, but I already have a star mask. And I was going to use hearts, but I already have a heart mask. And then I was thinking, okay, snow, and I had a snowflake mask. I mean, everything I was looking at I already had. So then I was like, let me make a mask that's useful that I don't already have. And this is this is similar to some that I've seen in the past, but it's original and that you're creating it from scratch from your machine. Okay, so this is, and you can make it different than the way I make it, but I'm using this one, BA, and let me write that down so I can put it in the description of this video. 
It's the little shape that kind of looks like a star, a star BA A076. So that's the shape. We picked that shape. And the first time I tried it, so let's talk about the first time. We, I said, okay, well, let me, and I like them both, but I do like maybe, I think I'm going to use the smaller one more, but I did like them both. The first time I tried it, I kept the heightened width in proportion, and I went to 0.4. So, four tenths of an inch. In other words, four. So, that's how slump mall you can go. You see that? All right, that's, it was 0 0.4. 0 0.40. And then that even came out bigger than I thought. I was like, oh, wow, okay. I was thinking I wanted it to be smaller than half an inch, and then I was trying that. So here's a little trick for you. So you want to make you want to make a lot of these on the map, but you're not sure how many are going to fit. And you, don't, you, can't, you can't keep adding one at a time, because if I set one at a time and the next one and the next one and the next one, it's, it's just going to take you forever to put these on the map. So what I like to do is I like to do something called pattern interval. I like to change the interval to make, to make the spacing change. Right now, my pattern interval is set to three. I'm gonna show you how to change that. If I don't set it to three, these are gonna to be too close together for my comfort. They're gonna be right next to each other. So the smaller the pattern interval, let's show you where the pattern interval is. And again, this will be in the description. Always when I talk about settings, you're gonna go into this little wrench. The smaller the pattern interval, the closer together the objects are, okay? If you wanted them on top of each other, or real close, not on top of each other, meaning really close together, you'd make a pattern interval of one. But the further, the bigger your number, the further apart they are. So I liked the pattern interval of three for this particular stencil. And I said, okay. So here's a little trick for you. So I don't know how many are going to fit. Actually, I do because I have a note. I actually haven't, I wrote it in my notes. But I didn't know at first. So I picked a ridiculously high number. Instead of, instead of trying to go up one at a time, adding one more, being told it wouldn't fit, I just said, let me try to put 100 on there. So I, around 100. Just, that's just a little trick for you. And when you say set, it will tell you exactly how many will fit. So that's my little trick for you. Very sa time saving trick. So pick, your, pick a ridiculously high number so you don't have to keep guessing. It'll come back with the answer. You, you can fit 81. So what do you do? You put 81. In other words, it gives you the answer of how many you need without you going up one at a time. So 81 of those can fit. Pretty cool, huh? We have a stencil. And then the next thing I like to do is I like to group it. It, well, if I was, if I was, I think I've already saved this on my machine, but I like to, I like to select all these, and I like to, I like to go to edit, and I like to select them, select them all, right? There's, I select them all, and I like to go into um, object edit and group. There's that group button. Okay, so I select them all and group only because that way I can maybe put them kind of more into the center of that top right quadrant, so I could maybe make that one of my stencils. All right, so let's talk about, just again, this is a review. We're going to click on OK. We have a nice stencil. We're going to click OK. We're going to save it. So that's a review. We're going to save it. Right, right here on the machine. Again, to your Canvas workspace you could or to your USB. OK, it says it has a group pattern. You can't ungroup it once you save it. That's fine. And I don't have enough memory because I have so much on my machine. So let's just because I probably did this, yeah, I did this earlier, that's why. Let's, let's delete the one I did earlier. Okay, we're just gonna delete that one. Then I can actually, and then it's gonna, now I can go back and it'll let me save it. If you don't have, if you have too much on your machine, it makes you delete before you can save. And, and the reason I don't like to save it to Canvas is because when you retrieve something from Canvas, you're only retrieving the last thing you saved. And I'm, I'm always working in Canvas, and I don't want to keep retrieving the wrong file, so I know if I save it to my machine, I can get it very easily again. All right, so for this, for this particular stencil, we're going to just, we would click OK, and we would select Cut, and I just wanted, the, the reason I want to get you started on this is just for, I'm not actually going to cut another one, because why would I need another stencil, right? I don't need another stencil like this, but I, I needed to teach you how to make it, but I just want to show you something. This is what I want to show you. It says five minutes, okay? So this is very important because you're like, oh, it's only going to take me five minutes. I can go have a, you know, go, go run and get something real quick. But then when you actually press start, let me write this down too. I want to put this in the notes. When you press start and it actually determines, go ahead and say okay. Now, what it's doing, the auto blade is going in there and it's saying, oh, how deep is this? How deep is this mylar? 
and it's testing it, it's comparing it to its, its little sensor in there, and watch what happens to the time. Doubled, went from five minutes to nine minutes, almost double. Okay, I don't need to keep cutting. You get the point, okay? I'm not gonna actually cut the stencil because I'm, I'm, then I'd have to kind of edit my video and all kinds of stuff. But really, you, you're, this is the result, okay? So this is the result of that stencil. Okay, let's do it again. So I did that stencil and then I was like, hmm, okay, those are pretty big, so let me make some smaller ones. So let's go, I'm just gonna quit cutting. I just wanted to show you that the time will double. Okay, it's the next day. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to retrieve the file because my tutorials are all full of lots of tips and tricks. So let's say you either wanted to cut another stencil or say you didn't have minor material and you had made a stencil and you done you did all your work and you let your kids play with it and you made it out of paper and they, they kind of used it and they, they put all kinds of paint and color on it and embossing paste and all kinds of fun stuff and you're like, well, I need another stencil. So the next day you wanna make another one or you just, you know, some, you want to retrieve what you've saved. So go into retrieve data and you're going to go to the machine. So now it's, now you have four choices of where to retrieve it from your machine, canvas workspace, USB, or the computer directly using the US, the USB cable. We're going to retrieve it from here and we're going to go to the, to the end, the last page, and we're going to retrieve it. And that's the last file saved. Okay. So, so that's how we make the stencil. Very important, if you want to actually create this now, I'm not gonna take the one I have and try to resize it. Because you can't repeat things when you do that. So you, you won't know what you don't know. I thought about doing that at first, but I'm like, hmm, no, no, I just need to start back over. So let's just say I would just trash this. You, at this point, you can trash the whole file. In fact, I already have it saved and I don't really need it. So I don't really need another one. I don't think I'm probably ever gonna need another one because Mylar is reusable, it's just great material. So I'm trashing that, I don't need it anymore. Instead, we're just gonna start over and we're gonna make another stencil. So here at this point, I need you to understand that you are crafters. So of course you don't have to do what I just did. You can create stencils from whatever material you want. You can go in here to pattern, you can use these. I've used these to make stencils. I've used these icons, the grass especially. There's like a grass one in here somewhere. Here, I've used that one and I've stretched it to be a different proportion. There's a wave. You can make a wave one. I mean, you can make you can make them out of these ones, these built-in patterns, okay? But keep in mind, you don't want the... I did an apple one before, and that I had to connect the top of the apple to the bottom to make that stencil. But just keep in mind, you don't... These, this, this bike would make a good stencil, but a lot of these layered things would not make very good stencils because they have too many inside parts. So you want a stencil that's going to be able to cut out in, in a connected part. But... You can go get an SVG file, okay? So I just want you to, I just want to explain at this point, you don't have to do what I'm doing. If you want a bunch of circles, if you want a bunch of squares, stars, anything you want, or an SVG file, which could be whatever shape you want, you can make stencils out of whatever you want. In fact, if you want to design them so they're not in a linear pattern, they're not lined up in a, such a nice linear fashion, you can then use your canvas workspace and then you can make them alternated and make them interlocked and alternated, meaning like up here and down here and up here, and random, you can make random patterns. I'm just showing you how to do it to teach you. And I want you to go and make stencils and apply the things you learned. So I'm gonna now show you how I made this stencil. So BA-A076 again, click on that. Now for this one I created that I liked a little better and I'm gonna show you how they both work. We still, you know, we still have our same cutting, we still have our same settings in the cutting area as far as cutting goes but we can just fit more on the mat. So let's see what settings I used. I used point. This time I, let, I said, let me try this again and let me make them a quarter of an inch. Okay, so 0.25 inch. So let's see how that works. So again, it goes all the way down to point is 07. I get asked that a lot. Very small. You can make very small patterns, but that would be too small because the material is so thick and it would be hard to get the ink through this. So 0.25, again, use my trick of making a ridiculously high number and then telling, letting it tell you how many it will fit. So we know it's more than 81, right? Because we just had 81 before when we had, when it was 0.4 area, right? Then we were only able to put 81 on the mat. Now I have it almost half of that. So let's just try, let's just try 200 to see what it's, you know, let's just try a ridiculously high number and we don't have to keep guessing. Good enough, we'll try 200, let's see what it says. It says, no, you can't. It says you can only put 
144 on the mat. Okay, so that's my little trick for you. So let's, you, you always estimate higher and we'll just go with 144. Now mind you, I'm only using a six by six cutting area. So what if I was using my entire piece of mylar? That times four, right? You, you, I'm only using a little piece of mylar. That's why I told you to change your cutting area first so it doesn't try to make this pattern all over your mat. So let's click set and there's our beautiful pattern again. And let's just round this up by reviewing before we get to the masking part and how to use the stencil. So let's go to edit. We're gonna group everything, select all, select everything with that button. We're gonna click okay, object to edit, group it. Now you can move it more toward the middle. Click okay, and click okay, and okay. It's a lot of okays. You don't have as many okays in the CM350s. And you, you click cup. And that's it. We're going to hit start and watch the time change. It went from eight minutes. Okay. So the first one went from five to nine when you press start. Five to nine. The second one went from eight to 14. Okay. So I'm just putting a little note. I'm stopping. I don't want to make you actually wait to cut that. But again, the, the, I'm going to go ahead and quit. But you wouldn't really take 14. Okay. So let's, let's keep it real. I like to keep things real. You want it actually take 14 minutes because after it's done its first pass, you're going to know that you didn't need to do the second pass. So really, it should only take you eight minutes because after the eight minutes, when it tries to do another pass, you're going to say, quit cutting. That's what you're going to say. You're going to say, no. Here, you're going to hit on this button. After it does one pass, eight minutes, you're going to say, quit cutting. And it's going to say, carriage is going to, here, it's going to say, carriage is going to move away and you're going to say, okay. And you're going to unload your mat and you're going to be happy because it cut out just what you needed in half the amount of time it estimated. Because it saw the thick material, it tried to estimate longer. Okay, so before I get off to the showing you what to do with the mask, I just wanna show you that that did start cutting out some of those patterns. I had to stop it because I'm, I don't wanna use up my mylar. But I just wanted to show you a couple things about this. See, it cut them out really, really well. And I cut them on top of each other because I didn't change this between. I didn't change this when I was just teaching you between. But here's what I wanna show you, is I thought these are really cool these little pieces of sort of confetti. So what I did is I saved them because I think they'll make little, great little things for shaker cards because they're little plastic things. And I mean, why, why let these end up in, you know, polluting something, right? Just put them inside your shaker cards <laughs> it's because they're just little fine pieces of, of plastic anyway. So put them inside your shaker cards if you want. I mean, I like to be thrifty and economical. So you removed your mask from the mylar and if you want, you may have made, say, one of these round things around it or however, but I had already cut the paper smaller. I mean, I already cut it smaller, so I didn't need to do all that. So let's let's get my mat, do a little bit of crafting here. I always like to teach my crafty friends, you know, what, what to do with the things that you create with your scan and cut. And so I will show you, I'm gonna show you some of my, some of my inks. You can use whatever inks you have. I'm gonna show you some of the ink I'm using. Uh, what's called a sponge brayer. I'm going to show you my finished cards I created with brand new products called World of Good Sweet. And I only used the mask for just a little part of that project, but hey, that's how crafting works. I just needed to cut these smaller. I'll show you what I did with those as well. We'll use that one as well. Because when you're crafting, it's good to use all the tools available to you. Everything. And what I did is I just cut down my mask. But I would probably need my corner rounder, have a corner rounder, in case I'm gonna use that a lot because I don't wanna get mixed on the corner. All right, so what I have here is Whisper White cardstock. This is good, it has good ink absorption. And I cut a couple, you know, cut a couple of them out ahead of time just to show you what's up. All right, so here we go. We have a decorative mask, and I'm going to reach over and get my sponge brayer. Okay, well, actually, we'll use, we'll use more than one. We're gonna use We'll use, we'll use all three. So put these down. And let's start with just the circle one. We'll put, move this away from a little bit. So I have what's called a crumb cake ink. And I'm using sort of an old style ink pad. We have, we have kind of newer styles of ink pad now. But let's just, this is the way I open it like that. I just push in, flip it over. Okay. So it's, in, it's an old style, which I prefer. And a, but we don't make those anymore, so 
I can prefer it all I want, but you're going to get a different style if you do get crumb cake ink. And then what I like to do is I'd like to take a little sponge brayer, and when I'm using a stencil, and I'd like to roll it over the ink. Okay, so I just roll it like that. You can press hard if you want. Okay, and I'm just going to now use my stencil. Okay, I'm protecting the mat. So really, you can call this a stencil, you can call it a mask, call it what you will, but the more you roll your ink over it, and you can go back and forth, back and forth, but it would be easier if you, you'll ink more evenly if you go in one direction the whole time, but the more you roll your brayer over it, the more ink you get, the more it goes on the mat. So I have these dies, and, it, and I, I have these dies that create these globes, and they're just like fantastic, this is a new die. And there is a die in there to cut out a circle. And I was like, no, I don't want to cut out. Here, let me show you these dies. There's a die to cut out the circle. I'm like, I'm going to cut out a bunch of circles with my scan and cut, which I did. And I started using them behind my globes. These are my globes I cut out with the die, meaning a metal die, not my scan and cut, a metal die. You'll, you'll have to see all my tutorials to kind of see how all this goes together. But this is just, this is just not all my tutorials, but this is covered in other tutorials. All right. So anyway, I saw this circle here and I was like, well, why would you need a circle die like that? Well, it's to put something behind this globe. So I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of got the concept down. I understood after a while what they're trying to do here. And it's, it's so you can cut out the globe and you can cut a different color circle behind it. But now I can just use ink. So that's one less circle. I will be cutting out some circles with my scan and cut. But isn't that cool? And I think it looks even better with copper. Or not copper, this is brass. And so... Your little mask will look better with brass. Oh, that rhymes. Your mask will look better with brass. Some of these I made into stickers. I don't remember if this is one of them. Okay, I like meaning I... Yeah, that's not one of them. So, if I can find one that's a sticker, I can get these little pieces out even easier. Because they come out easier with stickers. Yes. Okay, so I did... I use some sticker material when I'm cutting dies sometimes. And then I can get all the little bits and pieces out way easier without using all my little pokey tools. But I don't have my pokey tool because I just kind of spontaneously decided to put the sticker on here. I just I was really going to show you the masking, but I think to get the big picture, it's better if I stick this on for you. So now I can use my little circle to ink behind my cards and make the little circle to go behind my globe. And maybe blue, I can make it ocean blue. But in this case, I'm just using crumb cake. Voila! And I put a sticker on it. So now I can, so that, that mask maybe, it isolated, oh, that's out of focus. There you go. Okay, it isolated the area, so I was able to just color in that area. And now I have the front of a card. And I'll probably go and emboss the whole thing. And we make these little things to make under them, like little little stands for your globe. Little, little dies. Oh. But I'll probably make that in a different color. Okay, so that's one use of a mask. Now let's get into the actual use of these fun masks, these fun, more decorative masks. So let's move that off to the side and let's use the big one first. So you're going to use this big one. And again, we're going to use the crumb cake. But if you put it like that, I don't think it adds as much interest to the card. So I think it's better to sort of put it at an angle. So we're going to turn it. So what I did is I just sort of lined it up. Like I took one of these diamonds, like not diamond, whatever these shapes are. I don't even know what they're called. Sort of... I, I kind of pointed them so that they're even like these two kind of match under that point so now they're at like a good angle and I take my crumb cake ink rolling it over and I'm rolling it over my mask and again the more you do this the more the darker it will get and I kind of wanted the, the edges to not be as dark as the middle so notice I'm sort of not doing the, the edges as dark but maybe I'll do the middle even more. See how I make the middle a little darker. Because I kind of put other things in the corners and I wanted to have that sort of antique -y look and sort of just let it kind of trail off. Okay, pretty cool. So that's what you do with your mask. And I made some I made a couple cards with this technique and then I took it and embossed it. So there's, again, I'm only teaching you one aspect of the card making. You, you have to use your other tools to get to the point where I got, but this is just how I started my cards is I started them by using uh, putting a mask in the background. So let me do now one with the small mask, just as a review, and just to kind of give you an idea of how this one looks di way different, just by changing it. So this was a point, this was a three, pattern interval of three. These was uh, point four, 
in, is four tenths of an inch, these little shapes, whatever these are. I guess we'll call them stars. They're like a star. And then this one is, which is I'm going to put that at an angle too, something like that. And then this one is um, the point two five. So it's a quarter quarter inch. I'm going to line one of those up. So that one I just lined up with, kind of, I lined it up in the corner. And because I made them six by six, they sort of cover, they cover my, my card base. Okay, you can, you can do this to the edges of your scrapbook pages. You can take Versamark, which is an, a clear embossing ink. You can Versamark over this, then pour embossing powder on this. You can take embossing paste. You could spray watercolor. You could do so much to this, as long as your mask, because it's plastic, it's protecting your paper. So whatever you're gonna do is only gonna seep into those lines. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so that's that mask, so let's compare. Voila. So what I did next, and I'm going to show you my finished cards and we're all done. Okay, so I actually didn't do the globe technique on the cards I'm showing you. I was just doing the globe technique for my future cards. But I, that's that's when you use your circle to just kind of sponge behind this. We'll put that off to the side. I did use this technique on my two cards. Or three cards? I did three cards. So what I did next is I embossed this. So it's always good if you're going to ink. If you're going to ink with a mask, you need to ink while it's flat meaning these pieces of paper are not embossed. Because once you emboss them, it's very hard to use a mask on them because they're not flat anymore. So what I did is I took this new, this is a new embossing mask by Stampin' Up. It's called Old World Paper 3D Embossing Folder. Okay, so I don't want my crafty friends to be confused on how I made these cards. So I took this piece of paper and I put it into the folder one at a time. And I took out one, I used, that, I used my magnetic plate on the bottom, that's my sandwich and then the 3D embossing folder, and I put one more plate. I didn't use two plates, I just used one because look how thick this embossing mat, this 3D embossing folder is. So I had to take away one of my cutting plates. Ran it through, okay? Ran it through, Did the, then ran this one through, okay? Give it some texture, give it some, some cool texture. Then I took some, I just love playing with my new products because like this is something that just came out on June 3rd. These uh, new, this is called the World of Good Sweet. So what I'm about to show you is just like so how I did. So then I took these little buckle things. Um, they're actually, they're called slides. That's what they're called. Antique slides. And I'm going to grab a, this is a piece of cinnamon cider. One of our new in color ribbons. It's called an antique slider. And I put that on there. And I kind of put that through. And... Okay, and I put that on my card. So I made little, I made that little element, and you know I put some adhesive behind it. Okay, and then I put this onto a card base. I used some of these dies, these dies here, and some brass paper. Okay, and I used a bunch of, I cut out a bunch of these at once. So this is brass. I only used a couple sheets of brass, but I cut out a bunch of the globes. I used these world map dies. I use this stamp set. I use this stamp set here, which is new from Stampin' Up. It's called Beautiful World to give that antique -y look. I used Mossy Meadow. And I used what's called the Memories and More Card Packs. If you've been watching my unboxing, you saw all these materials up close and personal. So what is the result of all that? And with the mess just being one part, again, keep in mind, this tutorial I showed you is only one part of what I did for this card. So I'm just showing you my final projects. Okay, what's the final? You have... This one, this one here, I created using this mask here, okay? So this mask that you just learned how to make, exact same mask, okay, that same size. I inked the back with crumb cake. Let me, let me turn my light a different way for a second. I'm gonna bring, I have to bring my light to a different angle because when I show you cards, it's different than when I show you a machine. All right, there you go. So what I did is a crumb cake background, the old world embossing folder, lots of brass dyes, so the scan and cut totally complements using metal dyes as well, some stickers from Memories and More Card Pack, and this little, this little guy, this little stitch one is called Stitch So Sweetly, I believe. That's a new, that's a dye. And I used the designer series paper from the World of Good designer series paper, Mossy Meadow, for that nice script font, some stickers, and what did I use for the background of that globe? I used my mylar circle. I thought this works like vellum 
and it sticks even better to the brass. So by, it's, like a, it's like having a vellum background, but it's actually a piece of mylar in the back of my globe. Popped up with dimensionals, so you can't see that maybe, but this globe is popped up with dimensionals because I just hid them behind the vellum. Or not the vellum, the mylar. Okay, so that's my first card. And my next card, I started making, oh, by the way, the insides of the cards. Insides of the cards, here. Started making, stamping the insides as well. Nope, I didn't stamp the inside of that one. But I stamped the inside of this one the same way I stamped this one. So this is a new ink color called Misty Moonlight. So this was Cinnamon Cider, the little strap, and that was an early espresso card. And this one is called a Misty Moonlight card. That's one of our colors. And that's the inside. And cardstock, that's it. Same, same exact technique. I don't need to explain the technique again. It's the exact same technique I just used. But just look how different you can get two cards to look by using the same exact technique but a different size embossing folder. So this one I used this, okay, the 2.25 inch for this one, okay, the, the smaller interval. And lastly, I think I did a little note card somewhere. Where's the little note card? Here it is. Just a very small, this was a very easy one to make. I just used the Memories and More card pack. This was a five minute card, meaning all I did was take out one of these Memories and More card cards out of the pack. Here, I think it was this one here. You can actually see it. You get two of each card in our pack. There. I took out one of these. I inked the edge a little bit. I didn't even emboss it. The next time I might emboss this whole thing. But it's already sort of textured and everything. So I don't even need to emboss it. And then I put, you know what, I might not. Because the stickers are going to stick better when it's not embossed. And I just threw a couple stickers on there. Stamped it in Mossy Meadow. And I think that might have been the, from a sailing, uh, come sail away dies. I just like, I just basically, I like to have a lot of die cuts. This is what I do. I, when I die cut, I cut out a bunch of things at once. They come from all different die cut machines, sometimes punch, sometimes, you know, so I just cut out a bunch at once. In other words, I don't, I have to figure out what the die was later, but it doesn't matter as long as your sentiments fit in it. And that sentiment again is from the world of good. So I hope you enjoyed this, this tutorial on how to create stencils. I hope you will go out and create some stencils for your particular craft projects and give this a try. That's all for now. This is the Papered Chef.